Hey everyone, so um, I just wanted to hop on and talk to you a little bit more about my last video um, and something that I brought up in there because this week we are talking about, actually this month we're talking about uh, depression, anxiety, um, causes, and natural ways of healing and getting through these things. Um, I think one of the biggest things that strikes me when I think about anxiety and depression is actually something that I did touch base on in the last video, and that's suicide. Um, a lot of people struggle with this. A lot of people have been so hopeless that the only thing that makes sense at the time is just being done. You get so tired and so, so lonely. And I was saying how I feel like the thing that connected me to my ex-husband the most was the fact that when I was at my darkest point and I wanted to just end everything, he was there for me. Um, now, of course, that did change drastically, but over time. Um, when I tried to kill myself, I tried to do it with Wellbutrin, um, which coincidentally was the antidepressant that the doctor put me on to help me with my feelings of loss after I lost my father. Um, this was back in 2004. I lost my dad on Christmas Eve of 2003. I was told that he did not survive the surgery, that he um, had bled to death from his injuries. My dad was murdered on Christmas Eve. Um, there's more about that in my last video. Um, so losing my dad, it was hard because as much as I didn't have respect for him at the time because I was the one raising my siblings, I was the one doing everything because my dad was a drug addict. The last six months of his life, he and I actually got closer than I ever imagined getting with my dad. Um, I just thought that my dad was a junkie loser for the longest time, that he didn't care, that he abandoned us. In the last six months of his life, I realized that, you know what, this is a good man with a good heart and good intentions. He's just so messed up from the drugs that he can't think straight and he doesn't make logical decisions. So I got to really know my dad in that time and he became like my best friend for the small amount of time that I had him for that. Honestly, I hated my dad. I felt like he abandoned me as a child um, because as soon as my parents got divorced, I started being molested. Um, I felt like had my mom and dad not gotten divorced, my mom wouldn't have been murdered in our house in the middle of the night. I, I blame my dad for everything. So getting close to him and then losing him was really, really hard. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, so, uh, back to the darkest part of my life. I had just lost my dad. I had just found out that my grandfather had cancer. And I found out that... Well, I had gone to the hospital and I had seen my grandpa in the hospital. This was all during the time that it wasn't like the beginning of the year. This was 
mid to end of the year, it was not long after this that my grandpa actually lost his fight to cancer. Um, but the hardest point of my life, I think, was during that time when I had already lost my dad. I lost my mom. I, The thoughts that were going through my head was, what's the common link? Everyone around you is dying. So, what's the common link? You are. And you know what? It's not my fault. Life happens. And the decisions that were made in life are why life happens. Um, the reason I could say everyone in my life dies is I didn't just lose my mom and dad. Prior to that, um, my mom and dad's, well, my mom's mom, my grandmother, Barbara, had passed away. And um, she was, hers was due to alcoholism. So hers was also a choice. Before that, my parents' best friend, Rhonda, who had been so influential in my life, she was like an aunt to me. Um, she, I just remember playing with her and my mom a lot when I was little. Um, and she was in an abusive relationship. She left the man and he followed her and set her house on fire, killed her in the middle of the night. So that also was not my fault. That was a horrible event happening because of a horrible person that she had been associated with in her life. Um. My mom's death was not my fault. She made the choice to have to do drugs, and that's the lifestyle that she put herself in. Same with my dad. He made the choice to do drugs and then date a married woman. So I, it's taken me a while to get to this point that I understood that, and it's important that anybody watching this understands that you will get to that point too. You will get past these feelings of, this is all my fault, I'm the connection, I'm what's wrong. And you'll learn that it's not your fault. No one ever blamed you in the first place. The only person who ever blamed you was you. Um, it took me a long time of, I would journal a lot about my feelings. I would write letters to my mom. I would go in the backyard and scream at my dad at the top of my lungs. I would cry. I would... There, there are so many things that took me a while to get there to the point that I felt better. Um, when I got to the point where I felt like I needed to kill myself, I was feeling like it was all my fault. I was feeling like my grandpa is ready to die too. If I stay in his life, he's gonna for sure die. And that'll be my fault. I left. I decided, you know what? My dad is dead. My grandma wants to take care of us, but you know what? I'm an adult. I am 17 years old. I have been taking care of myself most of my life. I've been taking care of my siblings most of my life. I don't need this. I'm going to go live with my boyfriend. And that's what I did. I moved in with him and his family. And I just, I, I withdrew more and more. And I felt sadder and sadder no matter how hard I was trying to be happy. No matter, no matter how I felt or no matter how I was trying to feel, I just felt like everything was my fault and as my grandpa got sicker and closer to dying I just wanted to die and so I took these antidepressants that were supposed to help me and one wasn't enough so I took two and two wasn't enough so I said you know what nothing's gonna help and I tried to take the whole bottle and I took it and I laid down and I waited there for God to take me and my ex was 
husband came in and he saw what had happened. And he drug me to the bathroom and he made me stick my finger down my throat and throw up every one of those pills. And I just cried. And I am so, so grateful that he did that. He may not have been the best person in my life, but in that moment, he was. Because had he not done that, I would not have two beautiful children who make my world go round. I would not have an amazing, supportive husband who has taught me that men are not like my ex-husband, that they don't just suddenly change on the dime, that, that that's not all men, that men can be trusting and loving and caring and cook me dinner and put the kids to bed, take them to school, um, if he's running home from work late, he called them every single night to say goodnight. Like, that's, I would not have the life that I have now. I would not understand what it's like to give birth. That amazing, wonderful feeling to carry a child in your body for nine months and to deliver it into the world and look at this amazing little thing and go, oh my God, I made that. <laughs> I would not have that joy had I made the choice. Well, had he not come in and stopped me from making the choice to kill myself. I would not have an amazing happy marriage. I would not have a career in natural health care where I get to help other people take control of their health naturally and learn that they don't have to live on antidepressants. They don't have to live stuck feeling like there's nothing else but pills and feeling sad and feeling alone and I wouldn't have it all. I wouldn't, I wouldn't be here. My family wouldn't have me. My grandmother wouldn't have only lost her child, which I can't even imagine the grief of losing a child. I've had a miscarriage. So I know the grief of carrying a child and losing it, and that's just insurmountable, but to carry a child, raise a child, watch it have their own children, and then have your child die, that's, I can't imagine. And then to have the man you've loved most of your life die shortly afterward because he's given up on his fight for cancer. And how she would have felt if in between that, her granddaughter gave up her first grand, well, sorry, her second grandbaby. Sorry, Shelly. <laughs> um, I, I couldn't, I can't, I can't even imagine how my family would have felt. And I want anyone watching this to know that you have family who loves you, whether you believe it or not. You have friends who love you, whether they are in your life every single day or not. You have a support system, and if you don't, you have me. So send me an email, send me a text, send me a Facebook request, whatever. I'm here. Um, just, you're worth it. Your life is precious, and every day is a gift so please from the bottom of my heart from everything I know and everything that I almost did and everything that I almost missed out on don't miss out on your life don't give up you're worth it suicide is a permanent solution to very temporary life problems that will pass um, if you like this video and want me to do more videos, please just go ahead and click subscribe. Give me a like so I know that I'm actually helping people. Thanks and have a great day.